Good morning, everyone. So if you're interested in IBM Cloud Private and Red Hat OpenShift, come on, and we'll, we'll talk a little about what we're doing today. So what we announced yesterday was a joint partnership to bring together IBM Cloud Private and uh, Red Hat OpenShift under one hybrid solution. And really to highlight, and for some reason my layout's a little bit off here, so let's try this one more time. All right, we'll push forward here. Really to highlight delivering certified Red Hat Enterprise Linux containers for IBM middleware and for the platform itself, running on top of Red Hat OpenShift. Being able to mix and mingle the certified RHEL images for IBM middleware and open source together. And then being able to actually deploy IBM middleware everywhere that OpenShift is supported today. So I want to talk a little bit about the things that we have found with clients as we talk to them about their various application patterns and their workloads. And in particular, what we see are these sort of three primary workflows for applications and then data governance. So the first is creating new applications that are based on microservice architectures. Then extending existing architectures with new interactive API to create new systems of engagement. And then finally, lifting and shifting existing workloads to optimize how they're deployed, how their cost is managed, et cetera. So we found these three patterns, this lift and shift, extend and enhance, and create or refactor new microservices. And we wanted to build a platform around Cloud Private that could address all of these different use cases. So this is one of several deployment models that we have with IBM. The first being IBM Public, which is our hosted managed IBM Cloud solution, offering managed Kubernetes along with other services like Watson and blockchain and IoT. Then Dedicated, which is a uh, sh an environment that is isolated to your production workloads, but ultimately is still leveraging some shared infrastructure uh, like networking, et cetera. And then finally, private, which is our software form factor. So you deploy it in your infrastructure, uh, wherever that's at, your data center or other cloud providers. And so cloud private itself is made up of four key components. And part of this announcement is that Instead of bringing our own Kubernetes, we can actually leverage the OpenShift Kubernetes and run directly on top of that. But we'll still bring the common services that run on top of that layer. So this includes how we build and collect logs, how do we manage the health of the application, how do we manage alerts, how do we actually deal with licensing consumption and common security. And then IBM middleware. So this is the content. So this is kind of the, the, the critical aspect here being able to deploy IBM middleware directly on top of OpenShift in a fully supported way. And each of the pieces that get deployed automatically tie into this common infrastructure that's made available on the platform. And then we still provide Cloud Foundry as well. We find some clients who still have a need for Cloud Foundry. They want a very tight, uh, very opinionated way of building applications. But Cloud Foundry doesn't offer the same flexible models that we have with Kubernetes in terms of how I manage stateful workloads, how I manage middleware, messaging, et cetera. And that's why we, we pivot a lot of our content there on Kubernetes. So with Cloud Private, we focus on uh, OCI compatible Docker images running Kubernetes. We use Helm as our packaging mechanism. We like Helm for, for various reasons, but it provides us with a open way to both package our IBM middleware, as well as allow you to build and add to the catalog as needed. And then we use Terraform as our cloud provisioning layer. So anytime we're provisioning compute, network, and storage in different clouds, we can actually extend those Terraform templates and manage them directly in the catalog alongside the Helm charts. At a high level, this represents the different runtimes that we're able to run on. And with this announcement, we're now able to actually substitute a Red Hat OpenShift and put that in between, basically replacing this box for Kubernetes. The other boxes still remain the same. Terraform, Cloud Foundry, Common Services, and that middleware. So this was the architecture chart that we showed yesterday at the keynote. This highlights the ability to run across different infrastructure. And with OpenShift, they've already certified several different clouds. We saw the announcement yesterday with Azure. Uh, we have IBM Cloud support coming for OpenShift as well. And so then on top of that, we're running Red Hat Enterprise Linux, then OpenShift, and then the layers that are above in blue are being provided by IBM Cloud Private as certified RHEL containers. So now you have a fully supported stack from the bottom all the way up to the application. And then the common services and the catalog 
allow us to both deliver more content to you, but also allow you to extend that with your own content as needed. And so you can mix and match, again, both IBM middleware and open source components. I'll leave this up just for a moment, just to highlight some of the content that's available today. So this represents what was available as of 1Q. It continues to grow on an ongoing basis. So in the open source category, database services like Mongo and Postgres, uh, web terminal access if you want a web-based uh, shell. Then on the enterprise side, components for, for DevOps like Urban Code Deploy, obviously Liberty, Node, MQ, uh, lots of variations of DB2, depending on your scale and your needs. Cloud Automation Manager, this is the component that helps us build and manage Terraform templates. So as we build, as we actually deploy Cloud Automation Manager, it integrates itself into the catalog and actually then begins to bring Terraform template content into the catalog directly. And then we have a, a long history with part of the team, in fact, that's building Cloud Private in our HPC space. So Spectrum, Symphony, and LSF, which are high-performance computing products that have uh, been used at very, very massive scale for quite some time. Those also are now available to run on top of the Kubernetes platform and take advantage of the way that it manages compute. So here we'll highlight a couple of key pieces and hopefully we'll have, yep, we should have plenty of time. We'll do some, some live demos here. But we'll look at these sort of four value propositions that are key to the way that we deliver cloud private. The first being able to quickly deploy and get up to speed with new applications. This helps us support that use case where we're creating new microservices or refactoring existing services. Then hybrid integration, being able to connect to external services, whether that's an AI service like Watson or messaging or other security services as needed. And then deploying that actual IBM middleware uh, directly in the platform. And then of course the management console that surrounds it. So with that, let me actually switch over here. All right. Coming up? All right, perfect. So, nope, the TV's not on. <laughs> All right, we'll get that fixed real quick. Bear with us just a minute here. There you go. Up now. All right, perfect. Okay, so here what we're seeing is the actual catalog of content. And in this case, we have, we've got pieces from IBM, as well as those open source components we were talking about a few moments ago. Now, we'll go through and actually do a quick deployment. And in this environment, I'm interacting with Cloud Private, but this is actually running on top of OpenShift. So the OpenShift console and all of its interactions with the underlying Kubernetes API is going to apply one for one here because what I'm looking at in Cloud Private is also based on the Kubernetes API as well. So if I look at the actual deployments and other resources, all of the namespaces that I see here are also the same namespaces that I have <clears throat> exposed as workspaces in OpenShift. So it's, it's the same environment. And now if I go through the catalog, and we'll pick on MQ to start with. So this is a Helm chart. All of the values that you see here are part of the parameter values that I can supply into the Helm chart. I can do this through the UI, where we provide some content assist and help to guide the user as needed. But also, I can do this through the command line. And the key aspect that, uh, that the command line makes so important is because that's how we would integrate it with a CI CD pipeline. We'll pick the new world target namespace. And then I could select other options here as well. Really, in this case, for MQ, I haven't enabled my persistence layer in this cluster but I could bring any persistence that's supported on Cloud Private or OpenShift. And so there I could have dynamic provisioners, whether it's Cluster, IBM Spectrum Access, or other storage backends. And we'll set a queue manager name. A queue manager is used by the application to interact with its messages. 
And then here we'll set a password. And then click install. Now at this point, all of the resources that are required to run MQ are actually being deployed. And so if I look at the Helm release, the Helm release is that deployed version of the chart. And here we see the stateful set, the service that it exposes, and the credentials and secret that actually are used to configure that, uh, the passwords and things that we saw a few moments ago. And if I go into OpenShift, I'll see the same information. I see the stateful set. I see the pod. And in fact, we'll go ahead and create a route. We'll bind it to the port for the web console. And the web console in MQ is using TLS. So we'll do pass through TLS termination. And then click Create. So now this route that I've just created has actually exposed that MQ service that we just deployed a moment ago. And here it'll come up and it'll redirect us to the login console. And we'll log in. And the key thing we're just showing here is that this is real, right? It's not, it's not smoke and mirrors. There's, there's actually a real MQ service running as a container. If I bound storage into it, and the container or pod were to fail, it would automatically do failure recovery, bring up the new pod, mount in new storage, mount in the same storage, et cetera. And at this point, as a developer, I have a self-service way to get access to components that are going to be part of my production system. As an operator, I have a consistent way now that I can deploy and manage from inception all the way through to production. And the idea here is not that you're always going to be clicking through the catalog as part of your DevOps lifecycle, but this becomes sort of the foundation that you can then use to automate your entire DevOps pipeline. And Helm charts, along with Kubernetes resources like stateful sets and deployments, automatically have built in the behavior to do continuous rolling updates. Right? So with Helm charts, you're going to push out new updates for the release. And in fact, in this environment, if I click back over to my available releases, We also do provide queues to help you understand, in this case, I had deployed 1.2.0 a couple weeks ago, and now there's a newer version available. So we can look across all pieces of middleware that you have running, so you're supporting databases, supporting messaging, et cetera, and help you understand when there's new updates that are available for you. And that's true for our middleware, but also for your applications as well. OK? So the other thing that we uh, will highlight here so it's not just about deploying it. When I actually deploy something, everything deployed directly out of the catalog automatically gets tied into that common operations plane. So Kubernetes is wonderful for running applications, but still requires additional work to be done in order to really integrate it to the data center. So what we're doing is we're actually doing all of that out of the box. So here we come with a common set of dashboards. We automatically deliver uh, Prometheus collectors for different pieces of middleware. And the idea is to actually optimize the experience for both our middleware as well as your applications so that all the pieces that you would otherwise have to stand up, log collection, alert management, health metrics, et cetera, um, auditing, all of that is stood up for you out of the box to save you time. And in this example, we can see the stock trader application, all of the different pods that are running, whether it's MQ or DB2 or the Java-based microservices on Liberty, are automatically sending in metrics. And then if I switch over to the, actually the new world namespace, we'll see sort of the birth date that happened here just a few minutes ago, right? The pods that we started deploying automatically began to get tracked. You can see where I cleared the environment out a few minutes before, and then the new ones actually pop right in. So there's nothing extra that has to be done. It's automatically built into the entire lifecycle. And the other thing that we showed yesterday on stage when I look at those different pieces for Stock Trader, I'm looking not only at, uh, at, at the capability to run traditional microservices, but also these other pieces of software like ODM. And the example we showed integrates something like ODM for business rules and our AI services from Watson. So here, Tone Analyzer is actually running in IBM Cloud, and the application running on top of Cloud Private is consuming that service. And so what we're doing then is tying together the complete architecture where I have a service that talks to 
uh, that collects data from the user, collects feedback, and then submits that to Tone Analyzer and, and requests what's the tone? What sort of, is this happy, is this angry, is this sad? And then that input becomes one of the pieces that allows us to make a decision on the loyalty program. And that's where something like ODM comes in to actually encode the loyalty program rules. So if they're angry, maybe I give them extra credits or I give them an additional call, right? Something to help go back and make sure that that customer relationship is always kept very healthy. And so we'll actually go through and show that here. So the portfolio application itself is simply uh, they're listing my stock. And if I look at my user details, something happened earlier and I was angry. Maybe where I, I accidentally kicked the plug and the TV went off. But uh, in any case, in this case, I can go back in and submit feedback. And it's going to go back out. It's going to make an API call to Watch and Tone Analyzer. It's going to take that text and figure out what's the context, what's the tone that this is bringing in. And then it's going to go back to ODM and it's going to say, okay, what do I do now that I know the emotional state of this user? And in this case, if they're happy, we have business logic that says one free trade, right? So you get one free trade as part of your portfolio. If I go back and I say something like, If I give it angry feedback, the business logic actually goes back and says, uh-oh, we need to give them three, right? We're going to give them a little bit more. We're going to give them something else to demonstrate that we, we care about their opinion and we want to try to reconcile whatever thing that we did that, that damaged this relationship. And so all of this is all running on top of OpenShift, right? So if I go back and I'll look at my deployments here, and again, I'll just pull up the OpenShift console one more time and switch over to Stock Trader. So all of the pieces, including all the middleware, again, are all containerized. All right, and if you want to actually try this out yourself, there's two good options. One, you can just go to GitHub, clone a repo, try community edition, and then there's an option that actually has full environments that are all stood up, ready to go. You click through, and in two minutes, you're actually running your own cloud private. You're able to kick the tires. Today, these are still, we're, we're using our Kubernetes environment from cloud private. We'll begin the tech preview process for ICP running on OpenShift through the end of this quarter, and we anticipate to have it fully GA sometime in 3Q. So if you're interested in, in participating in that, reach out to me, uh, MD Elder on Twitter, and uh, I'd be love, love to help you uh, get involved with that and collect feedback. And thank you so much for your time.